uh, reasons to learn data warehouse, right? First thing is that uh, it's, um, I would say the last one listed in here, I would say is the first thing. So when I am learning data warehouse, I, it's a stepping stone towards, uh, as of now in, um, in the IT market, I would say data warehousing, anything related to data is, uh, is a rewarding career, right? So if you know about data warehousing, which is the base for every, uh, basics for every data pro related processing. So that's where actually data processing started initially uh, to build a data warehouse. So, so it's a very rewarding career. And there are some like the, there was time and decisions in business were taken based on experience. So I, I, I quoted this example before like uh, taking uh, decisions by experience and taking decisions uh, on fact, be, uh, taking fact based decisions uh, is like totally different. Experience really counts and um, we always talk about uh, like so many years of experience in something. But experience added to fact-based fact decision is what makes the business go really go in a very good direction. So, so we need fact-based fact -based decisions. So we need a data warehouse to do, take decisions based on fact, not based on, uh, not only based on experience. So companies, the trend of the companies here is like uh, uh, they're moving toward more uh, m taking decision based on data. So uh, there are a lot of examples you can see where where a company went to make an enterprise data warehouse and then they implemented this new system and they got rid of their old uh, mainframe system where they were doing transactional reporting and got into data warehousing where they improved their uh, improve their uh, revenue by a certain certain amount. So the companies that are, to be competitive in the market, companies are all adapting to this new trend of having data warehousing. And this trend is something which will never go. There has to be data. If the data is being collected everywhere at in every moment. Even now when you are sitting and attending this session, your computer is sending data to some uh, system where they are noting what this IP is doing or what not. So data is being collected every every moment and in this digital life data is being stored everywhere, Facebook, Twitter or any big data or texts or your phone or mobiles, the locations, everything. So you can get so many different information by analyzing all these data. So to analyze you need a data warehouse. So to so that's one reason why you can learn. So, so there are a lot of reasons why you should learn a data warehouse. So, uh, so yeah, there is a tech. If you go into technicality of things, right? For a data modeler, you would actually need the concepts behind uh, analyzing data before you can go ahead and be an architect or a developer, or you should have a basic understanding. So. That's the reason why you should know what is data warehousing because you need the, this gives you the basic understanding of what exactly the way in which the data is processed, what is the concept behind uh, the whole data processing logic. So everything, most of the cases like 60% of the cases where you do data migration, it ends up in a data warehouse once or one time or some in the later stage. So you always want to know where your data is going, how it is going there, why it is going there. So that's what you get to learn by knowing about data warehousing. So, so we define why we need a data warehouse, we define what the, and what are the advantages. Let's see what is a data warehouse actually. So what we saw was uh, a data warehouse is a place where you have consolidated data, right? So the first point here is central location where consolidated data from multiple source system can be stored. We discussed this. In, uh, and uh, the second is the end user can access the data warehouse when and whenever and wherever he wants. He, he needs, he, so I wouldn't say wherever, whenever he wants to access, uh, whenever he wants to do his reporting or analyze. So, and uh, a data warehouse is a consolidated system and it is loaded from your OLTP system, right? So, but it is not loaded every day. Every minute the transaction system is updated. 
you wouldn't you wouldn't read the data as soon as you won't create a trigger on your OLTP system to create one record in your data warehouse as soon as the OLTP system is updated. So that's not how a data warehouse works. Data warehouse is basically uh, a time-based uh, loading. It, it would be either daily, end of the day, end of the business day, maybe reports, uh, the reports you generate is on day basis or you generate reports on monthly or quarterly or a lot of the enterprise reporting is basically, basically on quarterly basis and uh, but uh, there are transaction reporting, there are ODS reporting, which are like weekly basis, like how many orders received, how many, uh, how many already processed, how many still remaining for the next week, maybe weekly or daily, how many, how many mails were uh, in, received in a post office uh, at the end of the day, or are these already being dispatched or is still in the processing stage of those kind of so it is a timely based it's not every transaction which happens in OLTP system goes into data warehouse it is a summarized data warehouse right so when you have your granularity in the system at daily level you don't want your OLTP uh, your data warehouse to be updated every time so the timelines determined by business needs as to when data warehouse to be loaded daily monthly or quarterly so that's what is data warehouse. So why is data warehouse so important? We have been discussing thousands of reasons why a data warehouse is uh, important, right? So let's just list out the, the ones which are in this slide so that it's not very repetitive. The primary reason for a data warehouse is for a company to get the extra edge over competitors. We discussed this. The extra edge can be gained by taking smarter decisions. We have been telling this again and again. Data warehouse helps to take smarter decisions. Smarter decisions can be taken only if executives responsible for taking such decisions have data at their disposal. Yeah, so he's taking decisions on based on his experience and based fact-based decisions. So that's what data helps you to take facts-based fact-based decisions. For example, let considers let's consider some of the questions which a, a manager has to deal with or an executive has to deal with. So the questions which you see in this uh, slide are how do we increase the market share of the company by 5% uh, or which product is not doing well in the market? Which agent needs help with selling policy? So this is uh, basically a uh, uh, market analysis or I would say um, uh, it could be a market analysis or supply chain analysis report oh yeah it could be uh, so what is the quality of a customer service provided and what improvements are needed so these are a few questions a manager is posted on right like uh, if there is a if there is a, a, a telecom system so okay let's not move away from the example let's take this example and let's see so in these questions right each questions have a have a needs to have a uh, fact-based output so you have to see in uh, like you cannot say that okay uh, let's see the answer a sample answer to the first question how do we increase the market share of the company by 5% so it's actually uh, a database decision which a company wants to make like 5% he wants to increase the market share by 5% so you cannot just said okay do this and do that uh, or maybe uh, add five more cost customers to your list by end of this quarter and you will increase it by 5% but not necessarily right? can you can you actually make that decision and tell them that it has to be five customers uh, I know that if I have more customers maybe I increase but exactly by 5% how, how do I know that so these questions are very specific and you need specific answers to these questions and you can do that only when you have data at your disposal and then you use the data to uh, do analysis, proper analysis, tool-based analysis to get the output. So the last question which they asked, so let's see that question. What is the quality of customer service provided and what improvements are needed? So what customer service? So when you sell a product, uh, when you sell a product, you always have a customer service department which will, which will, uh, which will attend to you as and when you, you need some help or uh, your product, uh, you, you need to claim your warranty or your product is not doing well or you need maintenance for your product, whatever. So that is customer service, right? Most of the company makes business 
more from the customer service than from actual selling the product. So this is a huge, huge market uh, share. So every company has their own customer service. So this question that posted here is like, how can they improve the customer service, and how, uh, what, what are the different questions arise in your mind when you actually think about uh, this question, right? How to improve the customer service? So let's uh, have different subset of questions. Let's split, split this into three. Uh, for example, in this case, let's split it into three subsets of questions and answer them separately, and then get the answer a fact-based uh, question. These three questions have to be fact-based and answers have to be fact-based. So then we will see how it develops into an answer to the first question, how to improve. it. You can see the question how to improve the customer service is a very subjective question, right? You can say talk nicely to the person and then the customer service will be, everybody, every customer will be uh, happy, but what if your product is not performing well and <laughs> there's something else which is needed just not just talking nicely to the person, improve the customer service. So, so let's get into the fact-based questions, right? Let's consider the strategy question for the manager or the executive is trying to find the answer for. So what, how, what is the quality of the customer service provided and what improvements are needed? This is the question, right? So how many customer feedbacks do we have in last six months? This is one subset of our question, right? So it's a very fact-based question. You can get the data for this fact from your system, from your OLTP system. How will this help you? This will help you how many customer feedbacks do we need in, uh, do we have in last six months. That means how many actual feedbacks you got from customers or for your product in past six months. Maybe then you will see how many of these feedbacks are actually good feedbacks? Like customers said, awesome, your product is the best product I've ever used. Do, do you have those feedbacks or you have feedbacks uh, from customers that are average? Product is average, any other product in the market can do that. What your product is doing, something like that. Generally, you don't get those average feedbacks. But uh, yeah, how many are bad feedbacks? So these are the, so this will give you an idea about your product or your customer service to the, like if you see, uh, it's simple, right? If you see too many excellence, uh, perfect, your product cus uh, customer service is doing very good and you see too many bads, then you want to see the next question arises is why the customer is saying it's so bad. So you will see what are the comments or the improvement areas highlighted by the customers who have rated as bad. So these three questions will give you answer to that subjective question. What is the quality of customer service provided? But if you see when you split it into subsets, you have fact-based answers to these questions and you can give numbers to each and every question. And these numbers will give you a, will end up as a magical subjective answer to the subjective questions they ask. So that is what is data warehousing. You get the question, you split it into fact-based questions uh, you get the numerical answer, I would say, or fact-based answers to each subset questions, and you answer the the subjective questions which was asked by a CEO or a CFO. So that's what you see in this slide. You have one question, you split it into three fact questions, and then you load it into your data. Uh, the answers to these questions, you put it into the database, and then the re result to all these three is analyzed in the reporting uh, by the user and then he gets the answer to his question. So that's how it works. So this is all we are talking to understand why data warehouse is important, right? So now after he gets the answer to all these three questions, finally he gets answer to his uh, subjective questions, which is uh, what is the quality of the customer service, which an OLTB system cannot give, right? It has to come from a summarized. So in a OLTB system, Another thing is, it won't give you trends. So basically, a transaction system, right, generally has uh, current data in the system. So say, for example, let me let me give you an example, right? So uh, say in a transaction where a person uh, registered his address in a bank account, right? So say this guy 
uh, let's not take the address, let address becomes your dimension. So let's take an example of his name, just take a name. You register to a bank uh, and then you registered on a name. Uh, say my name was Harish and then I somehow somewhat happened and I, I plan to change my name and I change my name to from Harish to Suresh. Then the banking transaction system will show you only Suresh which is the latest information. It won't store the old name which I had and why I changed my name, I don't know. I changed my name and then you finally see this report and if you do a reporting based on names and for some case it's just an example. So for some scenario where you had to do reporting on names, you see oh this two guys, there are two guys for one account, Hakan Suresh and Harish have same account number. But there is no way you can determine my name was changed from this place to this, uh, this transaction to that transaction. So it's just an example, uh, it would never happen but yeah. So in an operational system what I mean to say is it never stores historical data, it never stores the trend. It never shows what, is ha what has happened to this record from one time to another. So a data warehouse actually stores trends. So it will give you trends for like, like I said we migrated data for 60 years of data for our organization. So I can actually see what happened like uh, in uh, like 60 years back when the firm actually started uh, how they were operating at that time, what actually improved their business uh, in this uh, long span span of 60 years. So, so data error actually gives you data, uh, gives you opportunity to do trend analysis. Uh, why is, uh, so again continued, why is data error is important? The process becomes easy, time efficient and accurate. So when you do fact based decisions, right, it's always uh, close to accurate, as, as accurate as your OLTP system or your ETL processing. So you can do, obviously a developer can do mistakes. Uh, 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 OLTP system can collect wrong, uh, wrong data but, but based on the data available, the data warehouse will be efficient and accurate and the reports you generate, you don't have to do the same uh, data crunching every time, every time your CFO asks for a report. You just have to build in your data warehouse, it will take care of it. You just click on the webby tool, you get the reports for every quarter, every day and you can drill down and see what is happening in each department and all those uh, features available, right? So you creating a data warehouse is always efficient than uh, doing manual calculations. It needs to note that the data warehouse is not a product that a company can go and purchase. So it's a, the data warehouse is actually not a tool, data warehouse is actually a concept. Right, so a company has to company has to implement a data warehouse based on their business needs. So it is always customized. So data warehouse is not a plug and play thing. You get a data warehouse, put it into your system, and then it starts working. So it is actually designed as per the requirement of the users. So what you see here on in the slide, there is a diagram which says. Oh, take the data from operation, so it's saying how the data warehouse operates or you load the data warehouse. Take the data from operational system, integrate the data from multiple sources, standardize the data, store the data in the format which is easy for decision making. So that's how a data warehouse is loaded. We have seen this uh, in uh, other slides also. So take the data, extract the data, integrate the multiple sources, consolidate and standardize the data and present it to the user in the way he wants it, wants to see it. So that's basically his data warehouse. 